Well, what we've penciled in for the second quarter isn't a move based on monetary policy, but it's uh, alongside the interest rate corridor implementation. Uh, so we're still actually awaiting more forward guidance from the central bank. But essentially, they've indicated that you might need a spread between the deposit and lending rates of something like 75 or 100 basis points. So that actually implies quite a large level of change in the, in the policy rate. Um, so we're actually, you know, we're just signaling to the market that there will be changes in the level of interest rates by the BSP. But it's very important to realize that that's not based on monetary policy because no matter which way you cut the data, whether growth or inflation, there's actually no, no need for, for easing or, or, or hiking right now uh, in, in the Philippines. But most of the attention will be on um, basically ameliorating monetary policy via the corridor. Speaking of signaling, the BSP seems now, seems now to be worried about inflation, although they're sticking to their 2.2% forecast. What's your take? We see inflation in a similar range. I mean, it, basically, we expect um, inflation to come back into the official BSP range by the middle of this year, a little bit beyond that. Um, but yeah, essentially, no matter which way you look at um, some of the inflationary impulses, it doesn't seem that we're going to get really many... Um, um, many shocks that'll, that'll suggest inflation comes above the target. Um, I mean, there's still some concerns over food prices because you know the El Nino effect hasn't fully um, come through yet. We're at the ending, the ending few months, but now we'll start to see some crop damage potentially. But at the end of the day, the fact that oil prices remain so low and broader disinflationary pressures from a global scale, that's really offsetting any, um, any signs of inflation in the Philippines. So uh, it's not really a variable of much concern for the time being. Today, we're also expecting balance of trade numbers for January. Now, you estimate this. HSBC says it's around $183 million. But based on our Bloomberg survey, it's around negative $160 million. So we see a big variance here. Where's your number coming from? Um, I mean, the, the trade numbers have been very volatile recently. Um, basically, we do have you know, imports fluctuating significantly, and that's based on the, some of the capital goods imports for the infrastructure program. Um, but basically, the, the, the trade outlook does remain quite difficult. Um, you know, we, we agree that the risks are to the downside for trade, and particularly when you look at um, uh, you know, electronics, which has been actually a relatively strong performer for the Philippines over the past few months. We saw electronics activity pick up. Um, but actually, you know, some of that's faded away over the past few months as well. And then when you look at the broader variety of exports from the Philippines, be it the commodity-related ones or light manufacturing, and we're seeing quite, quite strong contraction. So we think it's right to signal that you know, trade will be weak as for the actually level of the trade balance. A lot of that has to do with imports and, and what we see in the capital goods and the infrastructure buildup. Uh, so I wouldn't pay too much attention to that number. What looks, what, what's more important is the broader outlook for trade, um, which looks subdued for now. So for it, looking at that, the broader outlook for trade, now how do you see this given that there's a global slowdown and also there's um, Bloomberg Intelligence report that domestic consumption might also be weakening. How do you see this moving forward? When do you see it picking up? Um, I mean, yeah, so it's, it's not going to be picking up anytime soon. There's definitely, you know, weak exports everywhere. And most of the advanced indicators, if you look at the regional bellwethers in Korea or Taiwan that really started a lot of the production cycles, you're not necessarily seeing a pickup. Um, but for the Philippines, I mean, like, like we've continued to say, um, trade isn't as important from a relative perspective. And because um, the domestic drivers of growth are still relatively robust, still intact, um, this ultimately should offset. Um, but yeah, I, I, we're not in the trade number, strictly, look, uh, strictly speaking, we're not seeing anything until the second half of 2016. And even then, it's more of a leveling out of trade rather than an improvement. All right. Thank you very much for joining us. Joseph Incalcaterra, live from Hong Kong.